children in gangs because we had another report today uh, this one was carried out by Johnny Connolly of the Centre of Crime Justice and Victim Studies at UL and that looked at criminal networks in areas between the Liberties and Walkenstown in Dublin's south inner city and it found that uh, children as young as 10 or 11 many of whom are still in primary school are being groomed by the gangs there to be runners and carriers uh, of drugs and drug money and are considered to be both expendable and plentiful. Uh, Breed Smith, you were actually interviewed for for in the early stages of this report. Well, I was part of a, a community discussion for it when, <coughs> when Johnny first um, started doing his research in, in the south inner city. Um, this Dublin South Central is my constituency and I was at the launch of the report this morning. But I, some things do jump out at me, but I, I, I do need to start by saying that he found that throughout the whole constituency, the average of the numbers in the community involved in these networks, I think you prefer to call them criminal networks rather than gangs, uh, is about 1.2% of the yeah. entire population. It's so absolutely, yeah, it's I'm, I'm very, it's that. very important to say that because you yeah. do not want to stigmatise an entire, the entire community, community because these, these yeah. Yeah. criminal the networks have embedded did, themselves. I, I think this is an amazing um, graphic. He has a tree with the plant above it and the roots underneath it. And he looks at where this comes from, lack of opportunity, economic uh, mobility and social capital, poor housing quality and affordability, violence, community disruption, discrimination and poverty at the root. And then through their lives, as you go up the tree, these uh, young kids are experiencing uh, um, periods of homelessness, incarceration, mental illness, divorce, emotional and mental neglect, maternal depression, emotional and sexual abuse, substance abuse, and it goes on. So there is a picture here of how, when you look as well as the map he made out of the levels of deprivation in different parts of South Central, as against other parts of South Central, which have a high degree of affluence, where these networks are strongest and operate is where the deprivation is rooted. And that's an important point to make because his conclusions are important insofar as he says it has to be grounded in human rights considerations and the responses have to be delivered through coherent, locally orientated, community safety first approaches. And what he means by that is that all of the networks in the community, whether they're family services, youth services, drug uh, task forces, and the local policing fora, which are community-based fora, need to have a strategy where they work together. But what we're finding increasingly, and even last week news came to us, is that funding is being withdrawn from uh, many of the drugs task force projects. And we now have a situation in the canal communities where the HSE are trying to directly fund addiction services rather than working with the community services and the family resource services that currently exist. If we bypass them, we're not going to deal with the roots of Johnny Connolly's tree. Yeah, is we it, need to have a holistic approach. Yeah, John Paul Phelan, wasn't this exactly what the... Fo about policing and it's not just about justice. In the same areas, you have another report of children growing up in the cold That's where, where there's a lack of affordability that, the yeah, report, on Vince, yeah. the Vincent de Paul report. It's gone very much under the radar but it's quite shocking. You have other reports that you referenced at the start. We have a uh, a lack of um, intervention for kids with special needs. Uh, assessments and needs is in a chronic state in Dublin South Central. There's hundreds of kids waiting for a long time just to have their special needs assessed. So there's a holistic approach that has to be uh, taken and there's an attempt to silence the community development sector. And I don't care what you say from uh, Fine Gael's end, Dr. there is an attempt to silence Dr. them Connelly, and to shift them sideways. Dr. Connelly, Dr. Connelly doesn't want to see that, yeah, but he acknowledges actually, that it's happening. His report and his interview on and directly address the texter who said why should we look after these economic migrants when we can't look after our own in reference to the homeless and they have a point insofar as what they're hitting out at is the idea that we can't look after 4,000 children or over 10,000 in total and homeless. I don't accept that. This is an extremely wealthy country, one of the fastest growing economies in Europe. There is gross inequality and we'll see more of it evidenced when we come to the other reports you listed. Gross inequality and human rights violations of children, both in homelessness, in our communities, in all sorts of ways. And we can look after everybody if we end at the inequality that exists and stop pampering the tiny few at the top, whether it's vulture funds or 
or developers or builders. So when people find it easy to kick out at people in direct provision or to vent their anger on them, they really need to look above them and look at the government and look at the system that is running this inequality and presiding over it. And I understand why it always seems easier to blame the other, the stranger that comes into the country. But actually, it's those that are running the country that we should be venting our ire on and putting our demands to. Well, can I just say, I just government that in, initiate the scrutiny but I, I, this is an extraordinary story because and a lot of people feel very bitter of it least of all uh, Peter McFerry when he used the example of the tale of two cities but um, there's a problem we fob in but no time is attached to when you do that now it, what other workplace does that happen in? When you clock in... But that must have been deliberately built we into deliberately the software exempted. when that we was... We were deliberately exempted because yeah. it, where I work is I work from office in the Department of Agriculture. So the TD's fobbing in machine is beside a staff fobbing in machine. Their fobbing machine is made by the same company. It gives the times, but they also fob out. We don't have to fob out. We're treated with kid gloves and it is ridiculously badly set up to allow this sort of... Uh, what would you call it, Mis- misadventure it, it, in the use of our time. And my understanding is if we could get the times of when Dara Murphy uh, fobbed in, didn't fob out, we could probably establish, if we checked it against his flights records to, to uh, Europe, we could probably establish that he fobbed in on his way to the airport and fobbed in on his way back from the airport. OK, now we, um, are, we, we are speculating we, we now are because, speculating, as you say, we, we actually don't have any hard evidence. Get yeah. the time. And this has to end. Yeah, so I know, I just want to be clear there. We do not know no. uh, exactly because, as we say, we can, we, the, the software isn't, is set up for, for us not to know. So we can't say what exactly was. But I think there is a general acknowledgement that uh, Dara Murphy was tweeting but, from some of the, the we, we do know capitals of Europe on days when he was a- attending the door. Can I, can I, can I?